Worm gears are really cool. Here's why. There are two reasons why worm gears are really cool. The first one is pretty obvious. It's a really good way to get a high gear reduction, especially in such a tight space. Let's place a black mark on one of the gear teeth on the blue worm wheel. And here you'll be able to see how many times I have to spin the red handle to get the blue gear to rotate around once. You may have noticed that I have to spin the red handle the exact number of times as there are number of gear teeth on the blue worm wheel. This is because one gear tooth of the blue worm wheel fits in each slot of the red worm gear. And yes, a professionally manufactured worm drive will have much tighter clearances than this 3D printed model of a worm drive. The second reason why worm drives are really cool is because they cannot be back driven. Let me show you exactly what this means. We could get the blue worm wheel to spin by rotating the red worm gear. However, we can't spin the red gear by trying to spin the blue gear. It completely locks in place. This is perfect for something like a musical instrument where you have to tighten the strings with a lot of force, but you want the strings to remain taut once they're tightened. My 3D printed violin uses this mechanism for its tuners. Notice how once the pitch is set, the worm drive makes it so it doesn't go out of tune instantly. Another application that is essentially the same principle yet completely different is for a hoist. Obviously, after you lift something heavy, you don't want it to immediately fall back down. This is where the worm gear shines. Once it's locked into place, it should stay. Worm drives are also used in circular saws. This is because they could pack a lot of power in such a small, compact space. So overall, why are worm gears so cool? Well, they could have an extremely high gear reduction in such a small amount of space, providing power and torque in a small area. And they can't be back driven, which is really practical for a lot of applications. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end, and I hope you learned something new. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing and supporting 3D Printer Academy on Patreon. Check out 3dprinteracademy.com where you can find a bunch of unique STLs to 3D print at home. I also have a new section where I'll be posting completely free tutorials. Over time, I'll continue to populate this section with more and more videos. You could also find my paid courses online where I go in depth showing you how I design and think about designing things for 3D printing. And lastly, I have a buyer's guide. So if you're new to 3D printing and you're not sure what 3D printer to get, what type of filament to get, you could go to this buyer's guide on my website and see all of the products that I recommend. Once again, thanks for watching and happy printing.